What on earth is an axion? It's a hypothetical subatomic particle, the existence of which was first suggested in the late 1970s. The name was coined by the American physicist Frank Wilczek in 1978, who explained its origin. A few years before, a supermarket display of brightly colored boxes of a laundry detergent named Axion had caught my eye. It occurred to me that Axion sounded like the name of a particle, and really ought to be one. So when I noticed a new particle that cleaned up a problem, I saw my chance. The problem that it cleaned up, or at least was designed to, had to do with the separation of positive and negative charges inside the neutron, one of the building blocks of ordinary atoms. This separation turned out to be unexpectedly small, and one way to explain it was in terms of a previously unknown particle that interacted very weakly with the neutron's constituents. Since then, several theories that seek to unify all the forces in nature, including string theory, predict axion-like particles. It's also been proposed that axions would explain why there's a subtle difference between matter and antimatter in processes involving the weak force, but not the strong force. If axions are real, one place they might be formed is in the center of the sun, which is why scientists at CERN have built the Axion Solar Telescope using a prototype of a magnet for the Large Hadron Collider. It's also been suggested that axions could make up all or part of the 85% of the matter in the universe that seems to be missing, so-called dark matter. We know that if dark matter exists, it hardly interacts at all with ordinary matter, which means that so far, it's been impossible to detect directly. We can only infer its presence by its gravitational effects, including the anomalous rotation of galaxies and movements of galaxies in clusters. The same difficulty in detection applies to axions. Well, almost. Theories about axions suggest that not only should there be huge numbers of them in the universe, but some of them could be converted into light in the presence of strong magnetic fields. So maybe the best place to look for signs of them would be where the strongest magnetic fields occur. One such location would be near pulsars, which is why a team of astrophysicists led by researchers from the universities of Amsterdam and Princeton have been looking for a subtle additional glow from these objects. Pulsars are fast-spinning neutron stars, the collapsed cores of massive stars that have exploded as supernovae. They're only 10 kilometers or so in radius, but have a mass roughly as great as that of the Sun. As they spin, they emit bright narrow beams of radio waves, which, if they're aligned with Earth, sweep across our line of sight like the beam from a lighthouse. The pulsar's rapid spin turns the neutron star into a fantastically powerful electromagnet, which potentially could mean that pulsars are very efficient axion factories. Every second, a pulsar would be capable of producing about a hundred trillion, 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 trillion axions. Because of the strong magnetic field around the pulsar, if even a tiny fraction of these axions converted into radio waves, it might add noticeably to the amount of radiation we receive. Not that it's an easy observation to perform. We need to figure out precisely what a pulsar without axions would look like and what a pulsar with axions would look like to be able to recognize the difference. This is what researchers have done. They've built a theoretical framework to understand how axions are produced and how they convert into radio radiation. A computer was then used to model the production of axions around pulsars and to arrive at a measure of the additional radio signal they'd give rise to on top of the intrinsic emission generated by the pulsar itself. 
The results from theory and simulation were then put to the test. Using observations from 27 nearby pulsars, the researchers compared the observed radio waves to the models to see if any measured excess could provide evidence for the existence of axions. Sadly, the answer is not yet. So, the hope for a smoking gun detection of axions lies with future observations. Even negative results, though, are valuable in science. This first comparison between simulations and actual pulsars has placed the strongest limits to date on the interaction that axions can have with electromagnetic radiation. Of course, the ultimate goal is to do more than just set limits. It's to show either that axions are out there, or to make sure that it's very unlikely that they're a constituent of dark matter. The new results are a first step in that direction.